are in Krakow at Atmosphere Conference and my guest is Diptano. Diptano, hello. Hi. Diptano, could you please introduce yourself to someone who may not know you yet? Cool. Uh, so I, uh, I, I'm a senior engineer at a company called uh, HashiCorp. Uh, it's uh, based out in San Francisco mm -hmm. and uh, I work on large scale distributed systems and uh, I have been working on a project called Nomad for the last uh, seven or eight months. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a distributed cluster scheduler mm -hmm. and uh, before HashiCorp I was a senior software engineer at Netflix mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also played the role of uh, a site reliability engineer there. Uh, I've been working with distributed uh, schedulers for the last four or five years. Uh, been working on Apache Mesos uh, before this, uh, but now I am uh, a core committer to this uh, to the Nomad project. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, Nomad project was part of your presentation yeah. here yesterday. What have you been speaking about? So I talked about uh, why uh, schedulers make sense in the new world of mm -hmm. uh, of service oriented architecture and microservices, and uh, how Nomad can help uh, people run operations uh, mm -hmm. when they are scaling up, when they are running microservices at scale and uh, what are the things that uh, you know people and operators should consider before choosing a particular scheduler mm -hmm. so that was my talk about yesterday mm -hmm. uh, you are strongly into devops you know the trends and you visit a lot of conferences where would you say devops is the strongest in the world like has the strongest community so i think it's it's super interesting i mean i think De devops is in a place where i think we are past the phase in the devops in the si in the life cycle where uh, people were still considering whether or not to mm -hmm. use DevOps. I think we are certainly at a place where DevOps is considered to be essential and integral part of how uh, people run uh, software teams and mm -hmm. companies. And uh, I think in the US, especially in the West Coast, like DevOps is like the new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, we are pa actually we are past the new normal. Like everyone, it, no one even talks about doing DevOps. Like it's mm -hmm. such so ingrained that it's the so normal. Natural, yeah. It's the normal, and uh, I think in 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 the UK, like I have been, I worked in the UK before I moved to the US. Uh, DevOps is speaking up really well in the mm -hmm. UK too, um, and I've been uh, going to conferences and speaking at conferences in Europe, West Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, I I feel like DevOps is speaking up there too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would definitely say like West Coast is where like uh, <laughs> it's the most. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, it's the home. It's the heart. <laughs> yeah, it's the heart. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> sorry. Actually, you partially answered my second, my another question because I was about to ask you why companies should go DevOps, in your opinion. Right. Um, so a company, I think you know, like if you think about if you think about like the people who make software, right? The people who write software, right? They they know like they know like what how the software is supposed to be running and what are the constraints of the software mm -hmm. and then there are in the traditional world like there were people who ran software in mm -hmm. the traditional world there were people who wrote software and then there were certain people who ran those software so i think what happened was there was a disconnect between them mm -hmm. and in the new world as we are running like so many services and we are trying to scale up so much right it doesn't scale anymore like to have like separate set of people running software and separate set, set of people writing the software mm -hmm. so devops basically like bridges that gap and i think it's it only makes sense and feels natural that the people who are running software are the people who actually has some say or has has mm -hmm. an has an opinion about how software should be written mm -hmm. and the constraints that the software has mm -hmm. Uh, I have another question from our program council. They asked me to ask you, how are you planning to compete like big companies like Mesosphere? And aren't you afraid that they're, they're going to eat you for breakfast? <laughs> right, right. Uh, that's a very interesting question. So it, it's something like a cluster scheduler, you know, like takes two to three years to get mature. And I've been writing cluster schedulers for a long time. So to productionalize a cluster scheduler, it takes easily like one and a half years or two years. But the kind of work that we have done in Nomad, like I can't even explain like how awesome it has been. Like we have made the product really good for production and stable for production in the last six or seven months. Mm -hmm. Like to the extent that we recently did um, a benchmark where we ran a million containers uh, on, on Nomad. And a million container is by far the largest number that any, um, any cluster scheduler has published that they could run. And the number of machines on which we can run is also like, like is it's it's almost like as uh, you know like it's it's almost like two x the number of nodes that Mesos could run. So um, so ha having said that, like my point is that 
on a technical level, I think we are at par with where Mesos is. Mm -hmm. Kubernetes, the, the benchmarks that Kubernetes mm -hmm. uh, has, has published, like, come second to Mesos. So I think I'm not too worried about, like, Competing with Mesos and Kubernetes, um, <laughs> and, and the new quality. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, we, I mean, we have a track record of mm. making products which work well in production. Um, you know, like we are a very engineering-centric company. Uh, we don't believe in like uh, we didn't believe in like promising the moon and then not mm -hmm. delivering what we promised. Uh, so we have been like keeping our heads down and just uh, focusing on actually get making a software that is reliable and works for people. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would, that is going to uh, you know like work for us in the long okay. run. So what else can I say? Good luck with your project and thank you for this for this conversation. Thanks. Thank you. Deep Town was our guest. Thank you. Thank you.